Marines, family Marines, friends of Marines, brothers and sisters from our comrades in arms from the other services, it's an honor to be with you tonight to celebrate our birthday. I was uh, looking at the Commandant's message, and it's the first time I've seen it. And it's remarkable because when I was thinking about how to capture what the birthday celebration means to us as Marines, it immediately came to mind of my 50th reunion of my basic school class, which took place last month. And I want to share with you some of the events that took place, some of the comments that were made, and some of the things that really brought out, in my mind, what it meant to be a Marine, because I saw it manifested in the few that are remaining from my 50-year class reunion, and what happened to them at Quantico. Now, when we all arrived at Quantico, I wasn't sure what everybody was going to look like, how many were still around. My basic school class uh, lost 20 of our members in Vietnam. We had one POW that was in a POW camp in North Vietnam for five and a half years. And of course, most of us had not gone past our initial four-year term. All of us had been to Vietnam. A lot of Purple Hearts in our class. And when we all arrived at the hotel, it was interesting looking at everybody. I took particular pleasure in all those that were studs when we were second lieutenants and what they look like now. <laughs> and we kind of melted together all of a sudden. It was like we never left. The camaraderie, the flame of what it was to be a Marine, didn't matter whether you stayed in 39 years or four, it all came back with a big rush. We also rushed to the bar. And I gotta tell you, the sea stories flowed almost as much as the beer. And some of them were actually true. <laughs> I watched all my comrades from 1965, 66, and what really came into my heart was the fact that whatever the core imprinted in them lasted forever. It was something that no one could ever take away. Quantico was kind enough to have us visit OCS and basic school, tour the base, and most importantly, meet today's Marines. Now, we were pretty cocky when we got on the bus to go out there. You know, we were the old Corps. And each one of us was thinking it couldn't have been as tough as it was for us. We were the class of 1,000 965 BC, before Kami's. And we knew we were tougher. As the bus pulled up to OCS, two companies of candidates marched by. And I heard someone in the back of the bus, someone who had just had those four years and really hadn't kept up with the Corps that much, look out in astonishment and said, look, girls, because we all knew that the urban legend was true, that we were given saltpeter in our food, and there was no way there could be girls at OCS. We were now convinced that this wasn't the old core, until we stepped off the bus and saw the CEO of OCS, the sharpest woman Marine Colonel you would ever meet. And she immediately began to tell us about the school and humor us and about what our young Marines today that aspire to be officers go through. The question started to come from the old Corps. Are the barracks air conditioned? Yes, eh, I thought so. You know. <laughs> Is the hill, hill trail still as high as it was? Has to be worn down since our day. And we started to be pretty cocky on what we were. But it all began to change as we went out and we mingled with the officer candidates. And as we went through Quantico, with the enlisted Marines, with the NCOs and staff NCOs, with the young officers going through training. And I began to see in my old comrades a tear in the eye, a smile in the face, and a number of them came up to me, and, and Butch Neal, our former assistant commandant, since we were the, the ones that stayed in the longest in our class, and the pride that they just, you could, you could, you could feel it in what they had seen, in the young Marines that they had touched. And they kept saying to us, good God, look, you know, the Corps is as great as it ever was. 
These are magnificent men and women. And it touched me there that those of us that have been around for a long time, that celebrate being a Marine, think about our past and what we went through. When we touch the Marines of today and we see what they've done, we know the traditions, we know the spirit of what it means to be a warrior and a Marine is carried on. My son's a Marine, I'm extremely proud of him. Three tours in Afghanistan, one in Iraq, you know, and, and committed to the Corps as any of us were ever committed to the Corps. General Neller, our Commandant, faces an uncertain future. Budget cuts, we're uncertain about the threats that face us. And what I hear about the approaches he takes, it's the same ones I've heard from Commandants like General Wilson, General Barrow, and General Gray where we use our innovation, we use our spirit and our warrior ethos, where we use our sense of readiness. And I think it was best captured by General Gray when he was our commandant. Somebody asked him about the Marine Corps and where does it go from here? It was one of those times that constantly hit us about what is the future of the Corps? And General Gray said, I will tell you a few things about the Corps. When our country calls, we will come. When we come, we will be ready. And when we get there, we will fight. And that's what we're all about. It's the spirit of the warrior. It's not only in every one of us that ever wore the uniform, it's in every one of those Marines you saw on this stage, every one of those Marines that are serving around the world. You know, it is in our blood, and it will be in our blood as long as the United States needs a core, and it will for the foreseeable future and long after that. Happy birthday, Marines, and God bless our core.